The denial of reality is a serious problem in our government. It's not something new. We see it all the time. Just last week, your government told you it still believes COVID-19 was not made in the Wuhan lab. These people tell you with a straight face that every illegal crosser is fleeing for their lives and deserves an asylum hearing. They think manufacturing higher gas prices through horrible policy will somehow prevent climate change as the rest of the world burns everything in sight. The modern left lives in an alternate reality, one that closely mimics the idealized version of the world they wish was the real world. Liberals today live in the plot of a woke Hollywood movie where peace, love, and understanding always wins the day. And in that world, virtue and optics are about all that matter. The progressive mantra is, ignore reality, impose your vision on everything. Today, Reuters released an exclusive report on a call between President Biden and the president of Afghanistan from back on July 23rd. This was before the Taliban took Kabul. In it, Biden stated, I need not tell you the perception is that things are not going well in terms of the fight against the Taliban. And there is a need, whether it is true or not, there is a need to project a different picture. So forget the reality that the Taliban is about to retake this country. We just need good optics right now so we can keep up a mission that is destined to fail. Even as the Afghan president warned, we are facing a full-scale invasion composed of Taliban, full Pakistani planning and logistical support, and at least 10 to 15,000 international terrorists, predominantly Pakistanis, thrown into this. The Pakistanis who, of course, hid Osama bin Laden, a nuclear-armed country that somehow receives billions of dollars in your foreign aid and in return harbors terrorists. Of course, our government doesn't publicly believe Pakistan sells our country out. Why? Well, because when we ask them, they say they don't. Reuters also obtained transcripts from a second call later in the day where General Milley reportedly told the Afghan president, the perception is a narrative of Taliban momentum, and we need to collectively demonstrate and try to turn that perception and narrative around. So at this point, it's hard to see how there wouldn't be re uh, resignations from this. Every day, the situation just gets more and more incredible to see. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs pushing a lie while the administration is telling the American people Afghanistan's government is going to hold on. They were lying to you. It's quite simple. The president, the top brass, they're politicians at the end of the day. The politics is all that matters to them. Politics more important than this war, a safe evacuation, or even a soldier's life. Yesterday, we told you about Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller, a Marine relieved of his duty for speaking out of rank and demanding that our leaders be held accountable. People are upset because their senior leaders let them down, and none of them are raising their hands and accepting accountability or saying, we messed this up. So that's the video. Seems like he's got it together, right? Well, in response to that video, Scheller posted on Facebook how the military brass is now getting even with him. Quote, I was ordered by my commanding officer to go to the hospital for a mental health screening. I was evaluated by the mental health specialist and then sent on my way. The irony of that and how scary is that? The people that control this country trying to paint one of their own as insane simply for speaking the truth, saying what everybody knows is the truth as they are lying to us. That's a lot of irony. This was a disaster. Everybody knows it. Scheller knows it. We all know it. The only people that don't admit it are the ones in charge. In reality, crazy is thinking the Taliban is going to become an internationally respected organization, of course. But that's not stopping Biden and the reality deniers around him from attempting to sell that pipe dream to the American people. In fact, just yesterday, the United Nations Security Council passed a resolution that sent a clear message about what the international community expects the Taliban to deliver on moving forward, notably freedom of travel, freedom to leave. So in order to buy this insane version of reality, you have to ignore multiple reports of the Taliban killing the allies that we have left behind. Last night, Congressman Ronnie Jackson painted a real picture of the Taliban, talking about his constituents, Americans, left behind in Afghanistan. Listen to this. They can't get past the Taliban checkpoint. They were threatened. The 15-year-old son was struck in the face. The uncle was beaten up. The mother had a gun put to her head and told her, and, and the Taliban told her they didn't care who she was, where she was from, and, and if she had a passport or not, that if she came back again, they'd kill her. 
who knows how many Americans are really still in Afghanistan? We don't know. And you really can't trust what the administration tells you because they want you to think it's around 100. What the administration needs more than anything right now is simply plausible deniability. They need you to believe that they never saw any of this coming, which Reuters just blew out of the water, by the way. They need you to believe that they think that the Taliban are just going to behave by some kind of societal norms, that they're not just going to go back to the being the barbarians that we know them to be. Well, it's not true. But they need you to believe that. That way, when this all devolves into madness, which is happening right now, they at least have an excuse. It's not just a full-blown, total screw-up. They have some kind of excuse. They could say, oh, well, we thought this, we thought that. They're already saying that. As for those left behind, here's how the spin on that story has evolved. Here's today versus just a couple weeks ago. We have uh, Americans that get stranded in, in, uh, in countries all the time. First of all, I think it's irresponsible to say Americans are stranded. They are not. I guess Kirby's irresponsible. One of the people left behind is Joe Biden's own interpreter from one of his trips to Afghanistan back when he was a senator. There he is with John Kerry on the right, another useless politician. Biden did not take any questions today after he spoke. He left that, of course, to Jen Psaki. Well, I would say first, our message to him is thank you for fighting by our side for the last 20 years. Thank you for the role you played in uh, helping a, a number of my favorite people out of a snowstorm um, and for all of the work you did. As you heard General McKenzie say and others say over the last 24 hours, is to the diplomatic phase. We will get you out. We will honor your service. Uh, and we're committed to doing exactly that. I want to believe her. I want to believe that these people can get out, that an interpreter that fought for this country can get out of the country. It's just kind of hard to believe at this point because they've said so many things that aren't true. And tonight that interpreter is fearing for his life, hiding from people that want to kill him, people that are searching for him all over. Working diplomatically with the Taliban should be quite an interesting experience. That's what we're doing now. <laughs> you think they have diplomats? I mean, imagine a Taliban diplomat. Today, as Biden closed out the war, he said he took responsibility, but also, of course, blamed Donald Trump. I take responsibility for the decision. Imagine if we've begun evacuations in June or July, bringing in thousands of American troops and evacuating more than 120,000 people in the middle of a civil war. There still would have been a rush to the airport a breakdown in confidence and control of the government. And it still would have been very difficult and dangerous mission. It's all BS. All of that nonsense. It's all a lie. It took them 10 days to come up with it, but that's a lie. You think the situation was worth a, worse a couple months ago when Kabul was still secure? That's the wrong time to pull people out, is when Kabul was still under the... When the Afghan government was in control of Kabul and you had our troops there, and it was relatively safe. That was a worse time to take people out than when the Taliban had taken control of the city and the Afghan troops had all fled. Does anybody believe any of this? What reality are they in? The civil war he's presumably talking about is the Taliban's effort to retake the country. Now it's over and the Taliban is in full control. There's no way it's easier now than it was then, no matter what you're dealing with the Taliban, except now they have more power. Here is Biden passing the buck yet again. Previous administration's agreement said that if we stuck to the May 1st deadline that they had signed on to leave by, the Taliban wouldn't attack any American forces. But if we stayed, all bets were off. When did we begin? It just becomes so weak in this thing. He doesn't want you to realize is that America runs the show in this situation. We could have decided we were going to stay forever. What is the Taliban going to do about that? We dominated the Taliban with a small military presence on the ground in Afghanistan for quite a while. At another point, Biden said this. I still instructed our national security team to prepare for every eventuality, even that one. And that's what we did. After two decades of fighting for their country and losing thousands of their own, did not hold on as long as anyone expected. So now they want you to think that they were prepared for this. This is how they thought it was going to go down. They expected that maybe it was all going to fall apart. Did anybody watch this today and actually buy it is the question. Millions of people obviously wanted to, and with how polarized we are, they're going to say that they did. These are the people that voted for him, of course. But the past couple of weeks, no doubt, has been a painful exercise 
in denying reality even when it smacks you right in the face. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.